I'm going to unmute everyone. Yeah. Yeah, I guess we need them muted for now. Right. So good morning, everyone. Can you hear me? Yes. <laughs> yeah, you guys can all hear me fine. Okay, good. So this morning, we're going to start out with a presentation from Miss Mariah David. Um, she's going to be going over and talking about the Lone Pine Wellness Program, um, how she utilizes media and the internet to increase community outreach and participation at her wellness events. Um, she will also be discussing how building partnerships and collaborations with both native and non-native programs, businesses and individuals, and how this is beneficial to her community. Um, and then she's going to go over some of the topics and how this has worked for the Lone Pine Paiute Shoshone um, Community Wellness Center. So I would like to pass it over to Miss Mariah David. That was an awesome intro. <laughs> um, so yeah, I, I am going to talk today about, um, I kind of wanted to give everyone an update about where we're at and what we've been doing and um, basically how uh, the lessons we've learned and how collaborations and partnerships have really helped us in our program. Um, okay, so I know I've gone over it uh, a million times before, <laughs> but these are our collaborators and partners. These are our main ones. Um, the Payahunadu Alliance is uh, basically the, I would say, the blanket organization that kind of envelops all of these other organizations. Um, so you have AC Nutrition and Wellness. He's going to be providing uh, the nutrition. He's our, basically our official nutritionist for Lone Pine, which I'm super excited about. Uh, Indigenous Women Hike um, has been helping us out with hiking climb days, events, um, and just helping us to make those connections to get more collaborators and more partners to help and contribute to our program. Um, War Party Productions is myself, my media. Um, Legendary Skies does tourism. We're going to be, um, and we are currently actually um, trying to work with the tribe to come up with a uh, tourism business that we can uh, start to generate some revenue and have a sustainable program. Um, Toyabi Indian Health Project has been awesome. Um, there, I'll get more into that, but we have recently been collaborating with them, um, and I'm really excited about, about that. Um, and then Digital Smoke Signals is Myron Dewey. Um, he did all, pretty much all the drone footage in Standing Rock. Um, yeah. his film Awake is on Netflix, if you can check it out, it's awesome. And so he's been helping us a lot with media and, um, just giving us awesome advice, and he is also going to be doing a media youth training, which is awesome. So he'll actually come to a reservation, find out what the issue is that is important to that tribe, and then teach youth how to document that. Um, so that's gonna be awesome. So I just wanted to give everyone just kind of an overview of our main collaborators and partners. Um, and then I wanna go into how those collaborations have benefited our program. <clears throat> okay, so we had our youth, our first youth uh, hiking climb day. And it was awesome, despite the weather being really bad. <laughs> so I thought this was a really good example of how uh, collaborations and collaborators uh, can help you in situations like this. Uh, we collaborated with the Alabama Hills Stewardship Committee, and they were putting on a uh, outdoor event the same exact day that we were doing our hiking climb day. And so we basically just partnered with them, which was super beneficial because the weather was really awful that day and we had planned to take kids climbing, but the rocks were so slippery that we couldn't do that. But thankfully, our collaborators had a whole list of activities already lined up. And so we basically came in and added that indigenous perspective, which was really cool. Um, and so these are just a couple of the pictures. Um, the kids uh, worked on a restoration project where they were replanting some of the, some of the plants. and um, but I think the most awesome thing that we got to contribute was they were going to be serving all of the kids McDonald's that day. Uh, one of their collaborators basically donated McDonald's because he owns the local McDonald's. Uh, and so we, Wes, with our nutritionist, we were like, well, what if we can prepare something healthy for the kids? And that's what we did. So we took all of our um, indigenous youth, and, and that's all of them right there. Um, we took our indigenous youth and we had, uh, we had just 
protein and veggies and they loved it. It was a really good lunch and they just had a blast. So it was really cool. Um, but that's just an example of how a partner or collaborator can help you even in your events when something goes wrong. Uh, you have a full team of people that are, are willing to problem solve um, on the spot. So we actually have our next Hike and Climb Day this Saturday. Nice. Um, and this time we're taking them to Bishop. So this one was Lone Pine, Alabama Hills. Now we're taking them to Bishop, a spot near Tom's place. Um, so it's, it's just cool to be able to get youth out on the land and we're going to get them fitted for shoes and get them some gear and it's going to be cool. So I'm excited about that. Um, so Toyabi. Wow. Right? Um, this is our, I know you can't really see it too well, but this is our gym area. That's the fitness area. It's not, it's about half, half of it. Um, but everything is ready to go with our gym area. We had some setbacks because, uh, the, the bathroom stalls that we ordered, I guess, were out of stock. So they had to reorder the bathroom stalls and we just got those installed last week. So, um, so the gym is ready to go. All we have to do, we were mopping yesterday, you can see, but our, we need a better mop. So uh, we're gonna be mopping it up and then um, moving all the equipment in. And uh, Toyabi, both Bishop Toyabi and Lone Point Toyabi have donated uh, so much to us. So the Bishop Toyabi, we got this, the Cybex multi gym. So it's a giant multi gym that you can have a full body workout and they gave it to us for free. So, I mean, that's thousands, thousands of dollars they saved us. Um, they also gave us a treadmill, um, some gym mats, uh, and uh, just some weights that we could use. Um, Lone Pine Toyabi is giving us uh, these, the, the equipment you can see in the top right hand corner. Mm -hmm. um, so a treadmill, an elliptical, and a, a bike. Um, they also have some free weights that we're going to be moving into there. So again, they're saving us thousands, literally thousands of dollars. And uh, we're going to be able to put that money towards something else, towards more equipment or whatever else that we need. Um, they're also going to be doing a referral program, which is super exciting because they are going to be referring their elders or uh, you know, pre-diabetic, uh, whatever. They're going to be referring them to our gym. So patients will be coming to our gym, and we, I just spoke with a, a really awesome uh, physical instructor yesterday who's certified in so many different uh, things that we could totally make use of. And so when we get patients, they're going to come to her, and then we will get them a routine and a program, and we will track their progress in collaboration with Toyabi. We're going to track their health and their progress um, to make sure they're, you know, we track how how the gym is helping their health. And so I'm super excited about that. Um, and then Earth Day. So Earth Day was the other event that we had. Um, our team provided a bouncy house. That's another collaborator, a local uh, Big Pine Pipe member, tribal member owns a business called Jump It. And so they rent out their bouncy houses to uh, different events and parties and whatnot. And so um, our team, she actually used to work for me in Big Pine. <laughs> so our team knows them. And so I was like, hey, can we use your bouncy house and I'll take some photos for your business. And then you can use those photos and post them online or whatever. And she was like, awesome, let's do it. So we got a bouncy house for our event for free. And that's just another small example of how collaborating and partnering can, you know, really benefit your program and you don't have to spend extra money to do it. Um, our team also provided the music for the event. The last couple of birthdays I've gone to, there hasn't been music, and music just makes a huge difference when it comes to events. Uh, so we were able to provide the music for that event, and uh, also our nutritionist was there. He was doing one-on-one -on -one consultations with the tribal members, which was really cool. We served, because uh, everyone has a little booth, uh, different programs have booths, and at our booth we were serving uh, healthy brownies, which were there was no refined sugar and uh, no grains. So instead of flour, we used hazelnut flour. And the brownies were just such a huge hit. And it was awesome just to see how excited people were to have a dessert that tasted amazing but was totally good for them. And our nutritionist was there to explain to them why the brownie was healthy and how easily it was being processed in their body. So that was really cool. And then afterwards, we kept getting... Um, I kept getting phone calls and emails like asking for the brownie recipe, which I thought was so cool. 
So um, I don't know if any of you follow us on Facebook, but we're uh, the Lone Pine Wellness Program on Facebook, and I posted the brownie recipe there, and it's they're awesome. Uh, you won't be able to tell the difference. So, so yeah, that was really cool, and um, we hope to use those bouncy because bouncy houses they just bring all the kids. It's crazy. Kids were going nuts, and they were just so excited to have it there. So it just really brightened up our event. Um, and I'm sorry, my eye line is weird because I'm looking everywhere, but. <laughs> um, okay, so I wanted to go over how we built our partnerships. Uh, last time when I went to the Acorns training, that was one of the main questions I was getting um, from grantees is, well, how do you build these partnerships? How do you create these collaborations? And um, so I just wanted to go through how we do it. And um, first of all, why is it important? Uh, I think building these partnerships and building collaborations, both tribal and non-tribal are extremely important uh, because it will help you with your work. Uh, these, most people that do these kind of jobs do a lot of different kind of jobs. Uh, I'm, I would think I was the only one there that had the title of a wellness coordinator. Most people are administrative assistants or environmental directors. And so you really, it's really beneficial to start building that team and start connecting with people who have similar goals and uh, similar things that they want to accomplish. And then you can help each other do that, which is the way that we always think. Anytime we meet anybody, we're just like, Hey, you do that. I do this. Let's collaborate. And so uh, it's, so a lot of people are thinking, well, I don't do media. You know, media is a big thing to offer collaborators and partnerships. Like if you can make them a video, or document something for them, they are so willing to, to donate their time or whatever they can, their resources. Um, but so many tribes have so many different resources that they don't even realize they have. And so I just wanted to make, go over a few things that we look for when we're trying to build a collaboration or a partnership. And so some of the things that you might be able to offer are extra funding, even if it's like gas money or whatever that may be, um, extra funding always helps. Equipment, like Toyabi was able to uh, give us this equipment that was just sitting in storage. So a lot of tribes have a lot of awesome equipment that they don't even realize they have. So I would go through and see what kind of equipment you can donate or help with. Um, building space is another one. If you have like a room or a meeting space or uh, like that's what we ask from people sometimes. Like, hey, do you have extra space where our team can meet? Um, do you have extra computers or, la or uh, uh, iPads or whatever it may be? Um, and then skills. What skills do you have to uh, offer? Like mine, for instance, is media. I can offer that to tribes. Um, but it could be anything from grant writing to uh, letters, support letters, emails, whatever it may be. Uh, there are a lot of skills that you have that you can contribute to a collaborator or a partner. Um, and then the other one is staff. Everyone is short staffed, everyone needs help. Um, if you have extra staff members to volunteer their time or to help you with a project, uh, that's huge. And uh, for, for staff alone, I have uh, really committed a lot of my time for a collaborator or a partner because they're offering us staff and that volunteer time. And it's always, it's just a huge help. Um, and then the other thing that tribes are, uh, people in wellness positions need to consider is what do you need from collaborators? A lot of times when I talk to partners or collaborators, um, I try to say, well, this is what I can offer. You know, um, what do you need? And a lot of times they don't know. A lot of times they're just like, well, I'm not sure what we need. Um, so I think it's really important to just go through and see what it is that you really need. Uh, is it just financing? Is it equipment? Is it staff? Is it extra help? Is it organizing? Is it grant writing? What is it that you need? So really establishing that first will help you build those partnerships and collaborations. Um, and just what do you need help with in general? And then um, I wanted to go over keeping a positive mindset. Um, our team, even though it's a team of seven and we all work together and support each other, uh, still stress is, is a is a big one. <laughs> uh, you get bogged down with this type of work. It's, it's, you know, it's, it's just a lot of work. It's a really overwhelming. Um, I was just talking to my team about this the other day about how 
wellness, the idea of getting your community well is such a, it's an overwhelming task sometimes. It's not easy to do. Um, you run into a lot of hurdles, a lot of politics, um, and it's important to keep that positive mindset. So why are you doing this work? For me and my team, we don't do it to get paid. <laughs> we do it because we see that our community has a need and there are changes that need to be made and we are trying to make those changes um, and support other people who are making those changes. Uh, we are talking about this as well. We're not trying to take anyone else's job or we're not trying to do anyone else's job. We're, saying, we're trying to support them to do their jobs uh, to the fullest extent. Uh, so any way that we can make them look good or make their events look good, try to get people at their events as well, um, just helps the entire community. It's not just about our program. It's about every program up and down the valley because we're, we all have the same goal. And I think if you keep that right mindset, we've noticed if you keep that right mindset and you're, you're doing things for the right reasons, things just fall into place. And for us, that's just how it's been. And it's just been awesome. So. Um, team building, wellness building exercises, I think is really important. If you have a wellness team, I think it's important to really make sure that they're doing uh, good mentally, emotionally, and supporting them in that way. Uh, because again, this work is really daunting sometimes. So uh, me and my team, we go on hikes. We try to go on hikes every Sunday. We meet together every Wednesday. And uh, recently, we haven't been able to do our weekly Sunday hikes because all of us have just been pulled in different directions and we've just been so busy. Uh, and we've noticed it. We've actually noticed the change of us not meeting together and supporting each other and debriefing and really talking to each other has affected our well-being. And uh, just a few days ago, we were talking about how we need to get back out on the land again and start hiking together again because that positive mindset really helps. And it uh, just shows you that you're, you have support and you feel rejuvenated to continue the work the next week. Um, so that's really important to develop any kind of, it could just be walking, you know, any kind of wellness program or activity that you and your team can do, uh, and then sit and debrief and talk about why you're doing this work. That's really been super beneficial to us. Um, the other thing is to celebrate the small victories. Uh, this is one that I recently learned because for me, I'm, I'm very much like, oh, it needs to be grand and it needs to be big and the big, you know, that's what I'm looking for and the big successes. But the small victories are really important because if you don't acknowledge your victories, then you're, you're just going to get discouraged and you're not going to realize how much work that you're getting done. And you can do all this stuff for your community and really work hard and do these wellness programs and even after all of that work you can say to yourself man i'm not doing enough <laughs> or man if i just worked harder or you know man if i just had more help or whatever you start to get bogged down in these negative thoughts and feelings and so being able to be positive and celebrate those little victories that you have um, really keeps the encouragement and really keeps the motivation going so it's important to acknowledge the work that you're doing and acknowledge yourself and your your own abilities and, and what you're putting forth for the community um, and support your team always make sure that you support your team um, i've always felt this way ever since i became a supervisor and then a manager uh, i realized that if i motivate my team and if i support them and if i'm positive with them and make them feel good they will have the motivation to Get the job done they are less negative uh if they will stay in a positive mindset but you have to keep them there you have to make sure that your team is is taken care of and that they have what they need and that they're being heard and they're being appreciated um because otherwise uh you suddenly have a negative team who doesn't want to do the work and is only doing it to get paid and that's really not what um what i what i'm about and what i want my team to be about i want them to be about the community and doing this for the right reasons and uh, the way that I do that is I support my team and I encourage them and I, I try to, as much as possible, keep them in that positive mindset. And in turn, they do it for me. And that is awesome because when my team can inter encourage me and motivate me and be like, Mariah, we got your back. It's like, okay, I can do this then. I, could, I can change the world. So anyway, 
Um, okay, so a little bit about media. Um, media is super important for Native communities. I've said this over and over. Um, and the reason is, is because everyone, we're in the digital age, everybody is on social media. Um, you know, paper products just aren't really common anymore. Everyone's online. So uh, with social media, we've actually increased our community outreach. Um, we we're getting, we're slowly getting more followers. Lone Pine is such a small tribe that uh, it, it didn't spread as rapidly as Big Pine or Bishop does. Um, but we're slowly getting more followers. We're getting more shares for our flyers. And um, I just added a little picture here that you guys can see. Uh, I was super excited about, we posted uh, one of our pictures on Ahobu Nutrition, which is our Lone Pine Wellness Program uh, nutrition page, where we just post different recipes that we cook and just try to give people ideas. And uh, somebody commented and added us to their story and said thanks for our communal dinner idea, which I thought was so cool that we were able to give a recipe uh, that was then used for a community dinner. And I thought that was so awesome. Um, so I took a screenshot of that and, uh, um, and I think that's just proof that no matter, you know, um, especially for, because I, I live in Big Pine. So somebody in Lone Pine saw that, took the idea and, and ran with it for their community. And I just thought that was great. Um, and then you can reach the youth. Uh, it's a lot easier to reach the youth on social media. That's where they are. <laughs> uh, so a lot of times that we post something and we go to the community and they're like, hey, I saw your post on Facebook or I saw your post on Instagram and I'm gonna try that or um, that looks cool, I'm gonna come to your event. Uh, and so that, that has just been um, awesome because otherwise when people get, sometimes when people get newsletters, uh, they just toss them right into the trash and they don't even look at them. Where if you put together like a snazzy flyer or a quick digital flyer or whatever it may be, people are more likely to look at it, watch it and be enticed to participate. Um, and then also what I like about it is it keeps everyone up to date. I, our program will share posts from Toyabi, from Bishop Food Sovereignty, from local farmers markets, other tribes. We try to keep everyone up to date on everything that's going throughout the valley, especially if it's wellness related. So just because you live in Lone Pine doesn't mean that you can't travel to Big Pine or Bishop to attend one of their wellness events. And that's really what it's, to me, that's what it's about, is creating these nation to nation um, type of events and programs where we can all help and encourage each other and support each other and try to get uh, maximum participation. Uh, so that's the other thing that I use social media for. Um, and then media is sustainable. This is what I always try to tell people. Um, videos, photos can be used over and over, uh, even if, you decide to quit and someone else comes along, they can still use your videos, your photos. Um, so we're planning on doing, uh, one idea that we had was workout videos. We also wanna do cooking videos. Um, our, we have a, our brand new kitchen is huge. It's gonna be an awesome set. But, uh, so we're gonna be doing cooking videos, demos. Uh, we'll document all of our events um, and our workshops. Uh, cause that's another thing that I think is lacking sometimes is, uh, you don't really get a, Hey, this is how the event went like to show a quick video of, uh, the events that went on, the food that was served, everything that happened just to show people, this is what happened. This is our next one that's coming up just to get that community interest. And for us, it's been, it's been working. Um, so that's just another way that you can utilize media and, uh, and then a lot of people think that you need a lot of fancy equipment to do media, but really, if you have an iPhone, you can do it. If you have a Android, I mean, they have cameras on phones now that are just fantastic. And no one's, you know, expecting a, like a high production, <laughs> multi-million dollar video production. Uh, so just putting together something quick and snappy that's fun to watch is, is really all that you need to do. Um, and then uh, again, any tribe that is, is wanting to, especially in the Valley, any tribe that is wanting to collaborate on that or uh, wants more information on how to do that um, can reach out to me and I would love to visit and um, sit down and talk to them about their resources and our resources and, and how we can work together. Um, and then also when we do, hopefully when we, we get our youth media training going, um, we can send out invites and let people know that it's going on and 
um, they can come learn with us. Um, so yeah, that, that was basically it. Um, I did want to, I forgot to put the last slide in there, but I did want to uh, talk about our social uh, media pages that you can look at. So Facebook, we're on as the Lone Pine Wellness Program. Um, Instagram, you can find us as Ahobu Nutrition. And um, also on Twitter, we're on, we're on as Ahobu Nutrition. And, uh, and then if you want to take a look at some of the pictures that I take, um, I'm at War Party Pictures, and that's, I will be continuing to collaborate with the Lone Pine Wellness Program and the Paya Hunadu Alliance to um, document these events and, and so on. So um, yeah, that was basically my presentation. <laughs> <laughs> so uh questions questions anyone have any questions for miss mariah i do mariah so you said that you were going to have myron dewey come over and do a course with the youth yes now are you going to be inviting folks in, especially in the region like Bridgeport and all that area to come over maybe they got youth that might want to attend yes yes so we're working on that now we've just been kind of trying to work out the logistics about um, what it's going to take to bring him down here okay um, and so once we got that all figured out yeah we're gonna open it up to all the youth and um, try to get as much participation as possible and when are you anticipating that you're not sure exactly when he might be coming well, he, yeah, uh, he is going to be out of town um, until June, and so probably later in the year, like July or August. Okay, so if you can definitely send that to us, and we can also send it out, that maybe that's something that we can attend as well. Oh, wow, yeah. Mm, that would be great. Awesome. Um, so then also, if you, Mariah, via email, if you could send out all of your war party pictures all your email um twitter all of those to us and we can send those out as well to everyone in case they want to look at your stuff cool i'll do that okay so i also like to give everyone a reminder that the end before you guys log out for the day there's going to be a poll at the end so if you guys can remember to take that poll it'd be greatly appreciated and I'd just like to say thank you, Mariah, for doing this, that we, we love all your pictures. We love all of your, especially your tobacco one that you just sent in was fabulous. Yeah, that video was I have another one coming out soon, so. Yay. Yay. So, um, does anyone else have any questions for Mariah? Questions, but I did start following you. Um, oh, cool. Yeah, just now. Yes. <laughs> so I, I was I was liking some of your recipes and your pictures, but um, oh, awesome. so when I cook, I I use coconut flour or an alternate, like I don't use gluten or anything like that. Cool. So um, if at any point, like I find a new recipe or anything, you want me to shoot you an email? Yes, that, or I, or pictures. I'll feature. Oh yeah, awesome. Because <laughs> I'm all about that. Cool. Like everybody thinks I'm crazy at work because of that, but yeah, no, man, I, I, I lost near 30 pounds now. I'm near 30. I know. Well, I mean, I don't know before, but at the resource meeting, when you were saying that, that was so awesome. Yeah. It's, it's our, our whole team has, has so lost cool. a lot of weight. Uh, we're all doing it together. So it's just been cool. Oh, good job. Keep it up. And yeah. Kristen crazy is good sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I yep. like the black sheep though. <laughs> okay, I don't know if you can see this. Let's see. This is a box of donuts. Can you see oh, what I wrote on top? Carbs. <laughs> type two. <laughs> oh my god. What is four people? Oh, I see it now. <laughs> that is so funny. So um I thank you again, Mariah, for that. And now I would like to introduce Juan. You guys have seen Eugene. We've heard Eugene. <laughs> Eugene is our new evaluator, and so he's going to be working with a lot of you if you have any questions. So I'm going to go ahead and hand it over to Eugene. Hello, everyone. Um, Mariah, could you turn off your share screen? Um, Sorry, I thought I did. You're okay. Cool. 
Awesome. Okay. Here we go. Can everyone see that presentation? Awesome. Okay, hi, my name is Eugene, um, and so I'm gonna be the program evaluator for Acorns in Sight for this upcoming year. And then um, also I work on comprehensive cancer control programs, so if there's any overlap, that's there as well. So we're just gonna kind of dive right in um, into what evaluation is and what this presentation is gonna be about. So what is program evaluation? the types of data and um, how you're gonna collect it. And then uh, I'm gonna have an example of how to actually do evaluation and something that I did recently. So what is program evaluation? So this is the definition by the CDC. It is the, system, uh, the systematic collection of information about the activities, characteristics, and outcomes of programs to make judgments about the programs improve the program's effectiveness and or inform decisions about future program development. So how I like to explain it um, to lay people is you're basically looking over a program and making it better and then you know guiding your decisions based upon that to you know improve it. Um, <clears throat> and just as a history of evaluation, it's still fairly new. Um, it started around like 50 years ago with you know a lot of social campaigns like uh, in like you know through the federal government and they're putting you know millions and millions of dollars into like federal programs but they weren't seeing if they were being done effectively and so evaluation is still pretty new and it's just gaining more momentum recently so acorns what we want to do is understand the program and then increase effectiveness and overall imp improve the program and then guide future decisions so data types. So you can receive qualitative and quantitative data. And so um, if you don't know, like there are examples right here. So qualitative data is like interviews, survey questions, discussions, meetings, um, basically any interaction, any kind of text or recording um, that you receive from an interview or survey or any data collection method is going to be qualitative data. Uh, quantitative is more so hard numbers and measurements, so that would be like the number of people attending events or, you know, certain statistics um, that aren't necessarily responses or open-ended. And so uh, an example of this was at the ACORNS research meeting. Um, that was about like two months, a month ago, and everyone received one of these surveys at the end of the resource meeting, and it was pretty quick. Um, and this is just a real smart, small bit of it. And you can see uh, it says resource meeting aspect overall, and you have excellent, good, neutral, fair, poor, and people just circle. Um, and this is just a really easy way to kind of get, uh, to do an evaluation of the meeting that you just had. Um, and that would be an example of quantitative data collection. And so what can you do with this data? Ooh, my formatting got a little weird. So um, what I did was I took the results and I made a bar chart. And so from there, you can kind of see the blue, the orange, and the yellow. So the, the colors correspond to different um, responses. So if you look at the bottom, you have blue as excellent, orange is good, gray is neutral, and yellow is fair. Um, and then any other colors beyond that would be negative, but there weren't any of those responses. And so you can see from the results that are, like, it's easy to see, um, even if you don't kind of have an evaluation background, that the majority of the table is blue. So it means that a lot of people did enjoy whatever you were doing. Um, so the registration process, it looks like the most positive thing was opportunities to network with others. And that was a big part of um, what the comment section has was just people enjoying that they could network, you know, with other tribes and tribal community, um, tribal organizations. And so infographics showing the percentage of how participants felt. And then um, in the bar chart below, I mean, in the table below, you could also see the total number of responses that were given and then providing your analysis. And so I wrote my impressions from what the responses were from the survey. 
And so how did I do this? So uh, I don't know everyone's experience in Excel, but what you could do is you could put in all the values and throw them into Excel and um, and then so you have the registration process and you have the number of people who put those responses in. And so that would, if you look back right here at the bar tape, I mean at the table below, that is exactly this. And so after inputting all the values, you can click on recommended charts in Excel. And from there, it would take you to this. And so these are really easy examples of just um, various charts that you can make. Uh, personally, I do like using bar charts. Uh, pie charts are also effective, um, and columns are also effective as well. But I think that bar charts are simple and they're easy to read. And so what you want to do is highlight the area of information that you want to put into the chart. And then from there, open the chart up and click it, and this is what you'll get. And so you'll have your chart elements, um, which is basically just the options of what you can have in your infographic. And so from there, what I did was to get to the chart elements, you click on this plus sign. And then I added in a data table, which kind of shows, can you guys see my mouse? Yes, okay. And so it kind of adds in these values right here. Um, without that, you would only have this top portion. And so that first part was a quantitative kind of analysis. And so we had hard numbers of, you know, what people said to each response. Um, and then you have more of a qualitative data collection method, which is what was, the, and so it's open-ended questions about responses. Um, so what was the most helpful part of the Acorn site resource meeting? Um, what was the least helpful part? And so people can write in free response. And so what you can do with that is you can compile all the information into just uh, all the answers that were said for that question and kind of see trends within the words. And so as you can see, each bullet is a response from the survey. And so even in the top three, they're all say network, networking. Um, and then if you go down, a lot of the words that you'll see is logic model. Um, and so you can see from there that I made a word cloud. And that shows that, you know, in the biggest text, uh, networking was one of the biggest, you know, most frequently used words uh, throughout the responses. And then from there, you can kind of get an idea of what, um, what everyone's impression was and then make recommendations based upon that. And so what do you do with this information? Um, what I did was, after I collected all the surveys and entered all the information into Excel, I compiled the information in a document to share. Because ultimately, even though you do have the information, you want to you know, share it and give it out to people, um, whether it's stakeholders um, or you know, your community members, just sharing the information is the most important part. Um, and so what I do personally is I like to have a quick fact sheet and my recommendations for 2019. So uh, this top portion shows just basic, like the quick facts, the things that I really wanna know and I want people to know. Um, and so 20 out of the 50 attendees completed the surveys. That's like, like a little bit over 50%, so maybe next year making them required. And so from that, um, you can provide recommendations based upon that. And then, other quick facts include like overall 72% of the attendees who completed the survey found Acorn's resource meeting a valuable experience. So that's a great thing. Um, a, lot, a majority of the people enjoy the Acorn's resource meeting. And so that's quick. And then the recommendations below are things that I think that could be changed in order to make the resource meeting better. Um, and then the first page is just quick facts and recommendations, and then after that, you kind of get into more of the technical report, which includes the infographics as well as the comments. And so what you do is you would then share this information out, whether it's a PDF or you can make it into a more you know appealing kind of one-pager that uh, 
is less text and more visuals. Um, you can include pictures in it. Um, this I was sharing in-house, so with Crib. So I didn't need to kind of make it pretty or um, I just kind of need to have all the information and data there. But if I was to say to um, distribute it to the participants, um, maybe I would include more pictures. I would include less tables, um, less hard numbers, but more so just impressions, word clouds, um, and making the information palpable. Because you really want to cater your information to who you're sharing it to. Um, so when you're maybe showing to your stakeholders, or to stakeholders and board members, uh, maybe the information can be more technical. People will have more of a background so you can show you know, hard numbers and more infographics. Um, and then if you're showing to participants or maybe elders or people who just kind of maybe don't have the technical background that you know would require to maybe read some of these more complicated charts, then you would make the information easier to read, easier to digest. Um, and that'd be, it's really important to cater to your audience. And so by doing this, you're ultimately improving buy-in, um, whether whoever it is, your participants who are participating in the program um, or the board members or stakeholders who are approving the process. And then from there, you're also gonna be able to create recommendations and so overall improve the program. And this also guides future work. Um, seeing where you're having faults within your evaluation uh, shows you what things need to be fixed. Um, if you're not evaluating it properly, you can kind of skip over, you know, maybe holes or gaps within the program um, that need to be fixed, but you aren't, you know, attending to them. Um, so another part uh, that I wanted to go over was the ACORNS technical assistance examples. And so uh, through ACORNS and through CTEC, uh, I will be providing program evaluation technical assistance. And so that includes data collection methodology and development. So let's say you have, um, you want to develop a survey, but you really don't know how, um, or you don't have the steps to do, you don't have the resources to do that. You can give me a call, we kind of brainstorm and see what, you know, what kind of information you need. Um, and then just various other uh, data, collecting, data collection methods. Um, I'm always here to kind of help um, you decide and develop those collection methods, and then as well evaluation plans. So we do create our own evaluation plans for ACORNS, but maybe you would like to create an evaluation plan to see how well your person, like program is going, or, um, or even just maybe outside programs that, you know, that could benefit from having an evaluation plan and you developing a template for your tribe. And so next would be analysis in qualitative and quantitative data. So whether it is, you know, really high end and you're using big programs like NVivo and other, you know, qualitative analysis tools, or just, you know, creating a word cloud and seeing what, you know, what the most popular words are, it's nice to have some um, assistance to kind of get an understanding of that if you might have a background. And then quantitative data as well. So um, maybe you aren't familiar with Excel or other analysis programs like SPSS or various other tools. And so, you know, reaching out to me and, you know, getting some assistance with that is definitely an option. Uh, data management and organization. So even though we only received 28 surveys, some of the data sets that maybe you're receiving um, could be for a school and you're, you know, getting them from 100 students. And so when you do have, you know, higher volumes of data, then it does become important how you're organizing it. And then the further, the better it is organized, honestly, is the easier the analysis is going to be and um, and then also just what tools would be effective to actually you know store and then um, utilize the data and then next would be resource creation so evaluation reports so just like I did with creating a PDF of the quick facts and recommendations and my technical report of the acorns resource meeting uh, just presenting creating you know resources that cater to specific groups and that ultimately show what needs to be shown. And then lastly would be dissemination methods. And so um, it's really easy to kind of think of evaluation as I'm going to create a PDF and send it to these people. But evaluation kind of can go beyond that in various forms. Um, I know Mariah is very familiar with, you know, me, social media, as well as just media in general. Um, and that is a great tool. An example of 
disseminating your evaluation you know results and so whether it is you know creating maybe a video or you know a slideshow or something that you know is visual not necessarily like words and text um, but can show your progress um, that can also be a very powerful tool in you know creating buy-in whether in all levels because honestly if you should create a video showing like all the successes you've had you know you can share it to everyone it's you know whether it's Facebook or sending on YouTube um, but almost everyone can kind of see that and um, it's very easy to understand and digest so that is me I went through it pretty quickly because I know I didn't have that much time but um, I can open it now to any questions that anyone may have or not <laughs> Um, I have a question. Yes. Um, so, uh, I, like I said, we were going to um, track people's progress, like when they're coming from Toyabi. We want to track their progress and um, uh, be able to use that data and I guess do, do an evaluation like you did. Um, and I guess I want to make sure that we go about it the right way and I've never really done data evaluation before, so is that something that we can uh, send to you or uh, call you and have you just help us with, um, I guess, condensing that data? Yeah, of course. So, um, I mean, just from hearing that, my first impression would be like, what kind of information you would want to be collecting right. from there, um, like whether it's like specifics on, you know, what your program is doing, or maybe even just kind of seeing trends within the people that are coming to the program, um, like seeing how much weight someone's losing and stuff like that. Um, and so that's all like my philosophy is also just very much uh, working with you um, I can definitely create you a resource but I think that you developing the skills as well is really important to kind of build sustainability um, sure. we are going into our fifth year of this grant and so um, having you have the tool like giving you the tools to make these resources and being able to share them as well and teach people later on I think is really important so um, yeah just reaching out to me and then we can make something that, you know, maybe even a template that you can use further on and translate to other programs. Cool, that would be cool. Yeah. Does anyone have any other questions? Oh, hello. I'm sorry I was late, everyone. I had another meeting. No worries. So we have a um, site visit on June 11th, and we're really, we have several grants that really need to have data and evaluation mm -hmm. and we're creating a team called our hope and wellness team that's kind of um, a, a group of community people and I'm wondering if you might be able to do this presentation for that group yeah definitely um, I can do this exact presentation or maybe um, if you can give me some more information about what they're doing specifically I can cater it to you know give them the specific tools that they would need Okay, yeah. so it's um, the group that we've assembled, or it's a pretty diverse community group, but they're all interested in learning more about data can um, guide our prevention efforts with, you know, not just ACORNs, but other things we're doing. Mm -hmm. So that would be really, this was really good. This, this is what I want to put together. <laughs> I don't know if I can, and this is so helpful for me, but I think if they, um, you know, sit through this presentation and get like a real basic understanding of how data can guide your efforts. Mm -hmm. Yes. So, um, would you would it be more of like a technical kind of giving? Like, so my example right now was just in Excel, and it was just a very basic kind of um, just I guess creating an infographic and how to share that. Um, or would you want something more technical of like actually going through the steps in Excel and making something or? Uh, no, just this real general. First. Okay, yeah. Then we could work on our Excel, I think, yeah. Yeah, definitely. Um, and so that's something through site visits as well that we would like to show, um, giving you kind of the tools, the tribes and tribal organizations to build sustainability um, and making sure that you have the tools to succeed later on. Yeah. Julia, is this something that you're wanting at the June 11th site visit when we come? If possible, that would be awesome if we could do that. 
Perfect. Definitely. So, Anyone have any other questions? So this is exactly what we want for our site visits that folks are calling in or emailing us requesting you know, specific things for us to do. So when we're coming to a site visit, we're coming with a purpose mm -hmm. and you know, not just the typical meeting where we're taking pictures, walking around. Right. We want to be able to assist you with something with the acorns or with site. Mm -hmm. So, and for future, what we're going to be doing is developing a technical assistance log or a form that you guys could go and we're working on it right now where you can go to the website the crib website and you can go into the acorns there'll be a technical assistance log you're going to fill that out they'll shoot it over to me and then i'll disseminate it out to you know geneva or eugene or monica or, or wherever it needs to go so we can get these things going um, i like that eugene brought up the sustainability component to this we are going into our fifth year, our mm -hmm. final year, and we really want you guys to have tools so you're able to if seek out other funding or, or whatever it is, you're gonna have the tools. And whether it be grant writing skills, um, you know, uh, data collection, how to store data, you know, any, any of those things, we want to make sure that you guys are set. Mm -hmm. And that's really what I want you guys to be thinking about when we come out for our site visits. Mm -hmm. What can we do to prepare you for this fifth and final year? Um, you know, so be thinking about that. I, I am calling and I am scheduling site visits. So um, be thinking of some dates. We've already set ours up with Julia. We've already completed ours with Mariah. So um, Kristen, I'll be calling you soon. But, um, <laughs> you know, so if you guys have any questions, please shoot those emails out to us um, so we can start planning. And, you know, the fifth year, it's really going to be really competitive. You know, we have a lot of folks. And so that's why I really, really want you guys to focus on those grant writing skills when we send these applications, because it's almost that time again, we're going to be sending the applications out. And I really want you guys to really, really um, call us if you need us, you know, if there's something that you need, please do that, because we're really going to be looking at the applications this year in detail. Um, also, if anyone has any reports or anything like that that needs to be submitted, please also um, email me, get those in, because we're coming to the end of this, you know, and it's going to be reporting again. So, mm -hmm. um, anyone have any questions at all for either Eugene, myself, or Miss Monica? <laughs> I just wanted to say one more thing, too. So, um, in regards to, like, the progress reports and final reports for the years, um, it's really, I mean, that is kind of like the evaluation, um, like that is really important to us just because we can really see what you guys are doing. Um, and if any, I know it takes time to actually collect all that information. Um, and even when we send out like, you know, maybe this change tool a few weeks ago and stuff like that, um, it does take time, but those surveys and those responses that we get are, you know, really important to not only to see your progress, but also just to show, you know, the CDC that we're actually doing a good job and that um, maybe we can get renewed for five years of funding um, after this grant cycle ends. Um, because, you know, because what we did, you know, you can actually see it. it. There's tangible proof, you know, at each tribe and tribal organization. Mm -hmm. So um, I appreciate everyone being here and, you know, putting in the time. Um, but again, if you need any help with your progress reports, final report, or any surveys that we may have, please feel free to contact us and yes. ask us to help and we'll be more than happy to do that. Yes. Yes. Thank you. Does anyone else have anything? I just wanted to, I'm, I'm really sorry I missed Mariah's presentation because I'm just in awe of what they do in their program. So if you, did you have any slides that are going to be shared or you just talk? Yeah, I can, I can email my, my slides. If Okay, that would be good. I want to take a look. Oh, cool. Thank you so much. Um, I'm so excited to hear about your wellness team. <laughs> I know. It's, it's something new. We're looking at evaluation and data specifically because um, we're creating an assessment tool 
um, for another project I worked on, but it's kind of like, you know, looking at our wellness and how like our garden project eating healthier is going to help with our people that um, are suffering with diabetes, preventing diabetes. So that's, that's always our focus with acorns, but um, yeah, they're like really excited about it. I'm like, oh, I have a really good group of people that are, you know, they want to learn about it. And I'm like, now what do I do? <laughs> <laughs> so also julia this is we're being recorded right now and then we're also going to have the link on our website and so you can also go there if you want to listen to it from the beginning um again please do call us if you have anything also julia how many folks should we prepare for when we come on the 11th um, well, if we have our CNAC group, that's about, it's always about 10 people. And then with our new, um, I'd say maybe 15 to 20. Okay, so again, I will be calling around, um, coordinating site visits with you all if I haven't already. Um, I will be. Um, if you guys don't have any more questions for us, you know, call or email us. Um, but I am going to go ahead and end today's session. Thank you all for attending. Uh, don't forget the poll. Oh, yes. Don't forget the poll. The <laughs> poll. Julia, Mariah, Jamali, all of you, Kristen, the poll. So is, is the questions are going to come up. Okay. That's also evaluation. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> all righty, guys. You, <laughs> thank you. Bye, everyone. Thank you. Bye. Okay, go to polls. Launch polling. There you go. There it is. You don't have to go through that part. Hmm? I can stop recording. Mm -hmm.